Well, good evening tonight, Christmas Eve, 2021, and I wanted to say to you that tonight is going to be a little unusual, a little different than we have experienced in the past. The story is still coming out of the Gospel of Luke. The first 10 verses tells the journey for Mary and Joseph, but tonight it's going to be the gospel not according to Luke. This is how it really was. So you see, for the last 29 years, we've celebrated the Christmas story according to that gospel of Luke story. And there's a very good reason for that. Luke is the only one of the gospel writers who tells the details of that night. He would have had to have spent time with Mary, sat down with her and gone through the, every instance of that experience. That made it more like a document than a gospel story to me. So, as Sergeant Joe Friday would have said, Mary, just the facts, nothing but the facts. So Luke starts with the background of Zechariah the priest and Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. She was visited by an angel also, blessing her with a birth in her mature years, shall we say. And it really wasn't clear which angel came and talked to Elizabeth but there are only two angels mentioned in the Bible at all. One was Michael and one was Gabriel. And so the gospel, according to Pastor Kent, since Gabe was out on his visit to Mary, he probably went by and spoke to Elizabeth also. He gave Elizabeth and Mary a very similar story. You will have a son. His name will be John. Mary, you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. And as we learned last Sunday, then Mary traveled from Nazareth to the house of Elizabeth, alone, unescorted. And she traveled there to see if what the angel had told her was true. And she found the truth when she entered that night. That catches us up to where our story starts. Because you see, Luke tells of a, of a census that's decreed over the entire nation. You will return to the place of your birth. And for Joseph, they would have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And then the, finally, the family crisis starts. No reservation in any motel in the area. But thanks to the compassion of that night clerk at the Holiday Inn, here's what started. Just behind the Holiday Inn, in a, in a barn, and that is the Christmas story according to the Gospel of Luke. So I believe that our traditional Christmas decorations can sometimes be deceptive beneath most of our Christmas trees. We find beautifully wrapped packages and possibly some small representation of a Christmas crash with the Virgin Mary, Joseph, the shepherd, and the baby Jesus. And, and there's plenty of gold, some circumstance, but very little, if any, mud. Mud not made from sanitized dirt from the old time feed store around the corner, but Mud made from the mucky landfill dirt. I mean, really dirty dirt. We need to place a pail of mud in front of the tree where everyone can see it. Why? Because it is that pail of mud more than the bright... lights and bows and ribbons and gaily, gaily wrapped gifts. And even the cute little manger scenes remind us 
of what God is really up to. It must have been hard for Mary and Joseph to be turned away from a warm, clean room in the inn to spend that cold winter night in a barn. Well, actually, it wasn't even a barn. It was just a space chiseled out, chiseled out of the open, rocky hillside so that they get the animals out of the cold and the snow of winter. And the animals were muddy. The animals were smelly. Hardly the fresh scrub creatures we see around the major in our little nat nativity scenes. And of course, there was manure. And think of that. Jesus was born into this situation. It seems really lost in our contemporary celebration of Christ's birth, doesn't it? It is in the mud and the muck that we discover what is so special about the amazing birth at Bethlehem. Mud, manure, really smells terrible. These are not things we usually associate with the presence of God. But Christmas announces to us that this is the kind of God we have. And this is the mud of Christmas. And it makes our God so wonderful. If God would have come with bright lights, trumpets blaring, and a heavenly chorus, do you think anyone would have been surprised? If God had come flying through the sky on a golden chariot in the guise of a mighty king, a warrior, do you think any of the people would have been shocked? If God had come in the midst of fire and smoke with thunder and lightning all around do you think anyone would have been blown away probably not when we speak of the holy and almighty God the creator of heaven and earth it is these awesome images of power that usually come to our mind in this birth of a baby God finds a very different way to come among us God doesn't use blinding lights or deafening wind. There is no fire. There is no smoke. There's no timpani playing in the background or heavenly chorus. Instead, there are the simple cries of a woman giving birth to her first child. The cries of a newborn baby in the night. Certainly, this is not how the people of Israel had always thought of their long-awaited king the descendant of David. The prophet Isaiah described the future Messiah as a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, prince of peace. But the birth of this baby in Bethlehem did not fit these messianic expectations. This birth did not seem to be the very becoming of a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, prince of peace. The birth in that dirty barn, that chiseled out space in the side of the hill, was not, was certainly not godly. It is not easy for us to know what is meant to God. What must have gone through God's heart and mind when God decided to come into this world in circumstances like this. What we do know is that the birth represented a special kind of self emptying where God humbled himself to appear in our world in a very vulnerable way he could. And when you think about it, we can't help but be shocked and amazed that God would love us so much that he would humble himself so much as to come into a situation of smelly and dirty world around to be born in the midst of manure and filthy animals. Yet despite this reality, we do our best to sanitize and take a true wonder out of Christmas. You see, it's not the secular commercialization that takes the wonder out of Christmas. Rather, it is our attempt to glorify Christmas and set it apart. To make something more fitting to respect the glory and and power that we typically associate with God. 
we also consciously and unconsciously impose a requirement that we must be joyful at this time of the year. If it's a memo from on high, proclaim that nobody is supposed to be sad at Christmas, that everybody is supposed to be happy and joyous, but consequently, there's no room, no time for tears, no time for pain. And so we work overtime, even frantically to cover up and deny those very things that make us human beings and not rocks. Everyone has got to have a Christmas spirit. And that means pretending that everything is wonderful when it's really not. And if we fail to pull it off, we find ourselves complaining about how we miss Christmas. And we think of this the rest of the year. And we share the hurt and the pain. But we don't do that at Christmas, do we? We even try to sanitize the Christmas story from Scripture. We remove it from the ordinary, the muddy world in which we all must live. There's no sound of pain from a mother in childbirth. The idealized infant portrayed on the Hallmark cars in living nativity scenes and Christmas pageants is precious, adorable, and remarkably subdued. The animals in the stable are washed and inexplicably the little drummer boy occasionally appears on the scene. Oops. Where did that come from? The shepherds are squeaky clean. And of course, we have our Christmas tree with the shining lights, decorations, ornaments standing and reminding us that this is a time like no other time. And on this night, there is no place for sorrow. There is no place for pain. You see, grieving and weeping are not welcome. Everything must be neat, clean, quaint. Mud is definitely out of the picture. But if there is anything that St. Luke's account of the birth in Bethlehem ought to make clear, it is that Christmas is just the opposite of what our world wants it to be. Besides the glory of incarnation, Christmas is about pain. A woman giving birth at night. Christmas is about God in the midst of the mud and the dirt. Christmas is about a child born in a barn, not in a clean and pleasant confines of a local inn. Our real lives aren't really too removed from this reality either, are they? This may be the first Christmas since our father, our mother, our sibling, or even a child has died. The first Christmas since our divorce, or since COVID took one that we love. Or the cancer that came back. Or the company downsized and we lost our jobs. In this all too ordinary birth in Bethlehem, we meet God. Not in his trembling and frightening holiness that makes us shake in our shoes. But in this loving and merciful holiness. A holiness that is truly unlike anything in this world. It is in this all to ordinary birth in Bethlehem that God comes face to face one of us to meet us and to greet us and why because when we find ourselves in a cold and muddy place in our dreams unfulfilled and our eyes filled with tears of pain because another year has passed and the problems are still there all we need to do is Look to the muddy birth at Bethlehem. That child is Emmanuel, God with us. In the midst of the mud, muck, pain. To assure us that there is nothing so dirty that it can separate us from the love of God. You see, God is with us to love us. This good news for all of us because we don't have to be afraid that our Christmas may have a little mud mixed in. We don't have to hide our hurt and our pain because that's not real life, is it? But because the first muddy Christmas 
there is still a reason to smile there's still a reason to celebrate for when we remember that the baby was born in a smelly muddy barn in Bethlehem we know that our God isn't going to let a little real life and a little real mud get in the way of loving us Merry Christmas and good night. Amen.